Have you ever found yourself needing to step into a new role, like a big one? Maybe you're a little afraid of it. That happened to me about 10 years ago. I was moving from Tennessee to Texas to step in in a general manager position for a, a pretty good sized office of a telecom company. And the day that I was first supposed to show up on the job, uh, I flew in from Nashville that morning and was driving to the office, and I had the entire flight to think about what I was gonna to say to this new group of people who I'd never met before, and all of a sudden, I'm their boss. I walked in and, and introduced myself, Jeff Lovejoy, and I said, before we get into what we're gonna to do together, I wanna to, to explain to you how I want us to work together. I said, so I did through three analogies, and the first one was a drill sergeant and a new recruit. People send their, their kids off to boot camp, and the, the drill sergeant in the traditional movies, you've seen it, you understand. It's like, do it, do it, do it, and they try to break them. And the drill sergeant has complete control over their every thought and every action for a period of six weeks or eight weeks or 10 weeks or however long it is, but it's a defined period of time, and it is complete and total control of everything that they do. That is one form of leadership, the literally positional type of leadership where they're, just, they're told what to do. The next analogy I was sharing with these folks, and I said, That's, that works, but it doesn't work well for very long. The second one is, I'll call it an adventurer and an adventure guide. So maybe, let's just say you're a, you're a rock climber and you want to go climb Grand Teton, which, by the way, I've done. And if you've ever tried something new like that or in a new environment, you know that it can be kind of dangerous. People die literally doing it every year. So I didn't want to die. Safety tip. And so I hired someone. Jackson Hole Mountain Guides. And so this guide took me and the rest of the party up the mountain and showed us the right path. And we still had to do the work. We still had to put forth the effort, still using our own gear, but they kept us from doing something stupid that would get us killed. So that's the adventurer and guide analogy. The third analogy, and the most powerful one, is that of a running back and a blocker. Think about a running back on a football field, right? They have the ball, they know where they're going. They know where the goal is. They know that there are obstacles between them and the goal. They just need someone to block for them. And that type of leadership is really more of servant leadership. And that's what we want to evolve to. And so as I was sharing this story with the team, I said, guys, there will be times where I will tell you what to do. Most likely because someone else told me what to do and we're going to do it because they said so. Effective, brief, but definitely not the ideal. And that tool will only be used infrequently. The second one, the I might know more than you do or someone else in here might know more than you do. We're going to learn from whoever that expert is and we're going to take that knowledge and learn it and evolve to it and eventually and then apply it so that we all get better faster. Right? But ultimately where I want us to get to is sort of leadership because that's who I am. It's the uh, belief system that I espouse to and I want to everybody in here to be that running back with the ball when you know where you're going you want to get there you want to get there in a hurry and my job is to remove obstacles that's where we're trying to go and uh, that that last type of leadership the personal is so much more powerful than practical or positional they're all necessary at times but personal leadership is in servant leadership is so much more powerful than the other two Thank you.